much more because this adds adds a lot of validity on top of the work that FlyQuest have already laid. You know, the first couple of games with Smite top roamers uh, being a little bit shaky for them there. So I wanted to boil it down to three champions specifically for this matchup to look at All right, in your picks for? and bans. Um, We've got the Zillion for Bjergsen. Obviously, that's going to be uh, okay. big number one. But the two other most contested champions for this have got to be Jinx bottom lane and Xin Zhao for the jungle. Okay. By far, most played for both these junglers. And I think that that puts Santorin actually in a very good position in the jungle matchup because he loves playing Trundle. And I feel like it and is you love Trundle such, in the Zen. such a good pick into it. So we will see if they make that trade. That would be the trade that I would want to make as a, as TL coaching staff. Let FlyQuest have the early investment in a Zen Zhao pick. Then we get Santorin Trundle into it. You can pillar him. You can use your ultimate. But they lose out on the Jinx instead. And that will be very, very valuable. Han Sama on Jinx is has been godlike for them. And I really like the fact that FlyQuest go for the Jinx first just because of what you're talking about right now. If you know you have those two priority picks and one has a pretty clear counter, why not go for the other one instead? FlyQuest will pick that up first. Your six bands, Gwen and Zeri still banned away on the red side. Karma, Kench, Thresh, lots of support type champion focus here. Caitlyn's going to be banned out too as Aphelios is locked in for TL and Hans. And I want TL to lock in their bottom lane here and save jungle to see if FlyQuest will still take it on 2-3 here. Don't show Sanborn's okay. champion early. I think you can have a really good counter. Good. Okay, okay. I love okay. this. I love this. They also break up the Jinx Leona kill bottom lane um, with Thresh and Tom Kench both banned. Leona plus Jinx is very scary because you can go E into Q, stun, that locks them up enough time for Flame Chompers to activate and can be deadly for an Aphelios who does not have his own dash. Well, the Jarvan is also still available. This continues like to be it. a powerful, popular pick. It is also not as hard countered as Xin Zhao is by the Trundle. Yeah. So that'll be locked in for Jose de Odo and FlyQuest. I think this is really good awareness by FlyQuest. They kind of sniff it out. They they know TL are just dangling up there. So many teams, we've seen all of these first pick Zin games. Uh, well, uh, really well maneuvered here by FlyQuest in the picks and bands. And they get themselves an all-arounder mid laner in one, two, three, without having to show support. So FlyQuest very could have some Aphromu tricks up their okay. sleeve. There's definitely a reason they are saving support pick until the end of this draft. Tio will get last laugh, but you expect them to use their final counter pick for a uh, top lane for or Bwipo. for yep. Bwipo instead. And so they theoretically should have to have to show everything first. So we'll, we'll see about that twist. And Bjergsen on the Corky here. This champion's still incredibly powerful. Yes, package was nerfed. You don't have it available for all those neutral fights, yeah. but the rockets are still just as deadly as ever. <laughs> the range is still incredible. The poke power, we know that it can also go for more of a traditional crit build if you need more DPS as opposed to just raw poke. So Bjergsen on that one is quite a problem to deal with in the mid lane as Rakan gets banned out by TL, Xin Zhao banned out by FlyQuest. They're saying, hey, we didn't want it, but we also don't want you to have it. Exactly, because they've already locked in Jarvan, you know, and they're not going to be the ones wielding uh, wielding the counter there. So like the, the cover up here from FlyQuest, them having invested very heavily in hard engage too with the Jarvan plus Orianna combination means Team Liquid want to ban out other forms that will set that up. Mm -hmm. So I love the first two bans here from Team Liquid, Rakan and Nautilus. You don't want anything to be able to set up a Jarvan Orianna combination for, for the other team later, because that is gonna be a Jinx re uh, reset on somebody. So good uh, engagement support bans from Team Liquid. And Aphromoo's gonna have to dig deep. You know what I call that Jarvan Orianna combo? It's a shaker bottle, like you do with the protein shakes, because it's got the little ball okay. in the thing. Jarvan builds the bottle. Oriana throws in the ball. Shake, shake, shake. I was actually going to, as soon as you started guessing, I was going to think it was something drink related, but yep. I thought it was going to be something more of an intoxicating drink, but I'm glad like, you Shake you a with, bottle. Yeah, this one you keep you healthy, healthy with. the protein. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. It. It's FlyQuest. You want to stay with the with the healthy exactly. theme. Exactly. We're keeping... Uh, we're all going to make it, bro. Growth mindset. We're all going to make it, bro. <laughs> all right. We got Zin and Lee banned out. The hey, trundle hey, hey, is locked hey. in for TL, so they will take that one for themselves, and they're doing exactly what we expected. Leave Wimpo pick for last let him have that counter pick guarantee yeah and so we finally get the reveal here on afro moves uh, champ tl have done a good job whittling down on the playmaking champions from him afro Moo has just been outstanding over the course of his career this man has had one of the longest lcs careers of any player 
and he's very versatile. You know, he he's played so many enchanters, uh, even at international events, kind of setting the trend. Has been recently very instrumental for FlyQuest with Engage, and now will be on the most defensive support in the game. Braum here, counter Engage, protect Jinx, really robust team fight for FlyQuest, and they could add some spice to it here with the last pick for Kuma with blind, but you don't want to blind Aurelia here, so is going to be the Graves. So much better of a blind pick top lane. They're very hard to punish. Well, let's see how Whippo wants to approach it. Whippo's a guy who's not afraid to uh, get With a little anything. wild here yeah. in Champ Select. So I hope we get to see something fun here for this final pick. Red side, fifth pick. Where's the creativity? Where's the juice? What's it going to be for Whippo here and Team Liquid? One second left to go. You want to lock this in? They do. Jace versus Graves in the top lane. Is that Jace from Arcane? Fuck OMG, it. bat Jace, chest. <laughs> Jace, Jace from Powder? Arcane. <laughs> Jace versus Powder, episode 11. It's not Foggies. exactly the juice we were looking for, <laughs> <laughs> but it is going to give them more poke. So there is reason behind the last pick here from Team Liquid, and they are banking on Jace plus Corky here. Long range poke. There's no surprise. However, you're playing that into Jarvan Oriana. It just puts more emphasis on your shaker combination yep. uh, that you're looking at later because that is going to be Fly's only aggressive combo. It means Jose has to have a good engage for this team to be able to pull it off because if you're facing that much poke, if you're getting outranged, Everything hinges on you closing the gap and finding the engagement for your team. The first try. Exactly. You don't get a redo. No, here. no, 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 Afrimu no. Aframu will try and jump in with the unbreakable. Braum can try and follow up on some of these setups, but it, because the ultimate is delayed, does not work as a main initiation and is mostly defensive or follow up. Plus, I mean, once Jarvan goes in, if the engage is wrong, if they're able to immediately disengage it, yeah. it's tough for him to get back out and survive that ranged punishment. Everybody needs to be on the same page. Jose must lead the charge correctly. It's a tall task for FlyQuest, but hey, they're undefeated so far. If they take down Team Liquid here, that'll be so impressive for this team. Certainly will be. Can't wait to get in there. Definitely a risky little bit of business here, passing the torch of engagement from Afro over to Jose, but Jose will also have some early options. So uh, see what he can get done on the Jarvan. Jarvan has got so many more avenues you can gank with than the Trundle, can get a lot more creative uh, with his EQ combination. So we'll see if they maybe try and mix up some stuff on the bottom side, you know, try and uh, subvert some expectations there as Ayla and Hansama definitely have done well for themselves in in this season. I mean, a lot of questions were circling. Some of the only questions around TL's success yeah. were about when, you know, when will CoreJJ get in? When will we see the real success? But uh, it's definitely a testament to Ayla's ability that he's come in, fit seamlessly with the team, and been, uh, you know, one of the big points of power. And to be fair, I think it is totally reasonable for people to wonder Hey, is TL going to be okay without Core JJ? Because the guy is so instrumental in pretty much everything he's a part of. He's a leader. He's a playmaker. He's the kind of guy that just does everything. And to not have that available is pretty intimidating. But Ayla stepped up beautifully, man. The guy had big shoes to fill, but he must also have some big feet. <laughs> yeah, I, it's funny because earlier during the analyst test, you were joking. Uh, it sounded like Raz when he was talking up Whippo was uh, was creating a Tinder profile for Whippo with with the accolades he was throwing on him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now I feel like you're doing the same for Core JJ. <laughs> Hey, but man. He's married, so uh, he, he's taken. Credit where credit <laughs> is due. If the boys are popping off, you got you to gotta appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, hype them up, baby. Gas them up. Always gas up your friends. Always. But Santorin's here clearing out from that top side of the jungle. He'll be moving to the bottom side. You'll see Jose doing the same thing. Mid lane's not going to have a whole lot of action here early on, man. It's Corky versus Oriana. We're just going to be farming up. Pretty much handshaking on that one. Top side here, teleport available for both. Kuma with the fleet footwork there on Graves. Stay nice and sustained against Whippo. Bottom side, Johnson and Afro have control over the wave. And you can see already, Santorin wants to play off this Leona. Whenever you have 
the advantage here in offensive playmaking. He wants to transfer down to the bottom side of the map as quickly as possible. So he goes red into Raptors into Gromp. This is the quickest level three that you can have towards bottom half of the map without leaving a buff exposed. Uh, so you cover both of them. He's down on blue side, hits his level three, back onto the blue buff here, and he's got the options uh, between one of the very common uh, pathways that he, uh, he has chosen uh, towards this Dragon River. Okay, both our junglers are around here. Santorin will be first to the scene using the sweeper, not finding any wards, any vision, any protection set up from the side of FlyQuest. Jose's not down here yet either. He's still just deciding to clear out more camps. He's over at the Raptors. Santorin's not gonna get a whole lot out of being down here. He won't find any wards. Jose's gonna move towards this crab, but Santorin's already here. This is the Easy. benefit of trying to read this play though for FlyQuest. So Jose will just turn right back up towards top side of the map and both of them will just return to finish out their camps. Early pass avoided. You could see it in the play, the positioning from Johnson and Aframu. It's it's quite obvious as far as the, the route that he's taking. You want to play off this lane. They read it just as well as we read it. Uh, you could see him by going for the zap on the cannon instead of stepping up. They don't want to expose themselves. So well done by both squads. And you can see there, they use the Scryer's Bloom. Jose knew that there was a ward there in the tri brush, so just wanted to use his EQ combo to get to that and clear that out a little bit faster. Ooh, Boy, getting no ganked here in either. mid. Santorin throws down the pillar. Bjergsen adds a little bit of extra damage, but honestly, Tokoi barely loses any HP, doesn't even have to think about using the flash to get away. Yep, this is highlighting one of the points we're about to talk about. Phase Rush, always oh, baby. so insanely good versus Trundle. The movement uh, speed plus the slow reduction. Take that pillar down from a scary ganking tool to uh, slight inconvenience. <laughs> Especially for these ranged champions, because I mean, aside from the pillar, Trundle just runs at you, right? So it's very easy to just slap him upside the head three times while he's running up. And then, okay, you got right. a phase rush. See you and your stupid pillar later. Bye. True. I mean, I hate to admit it as a fellow Trundle lover, but it is kind of easy to slap him upside the head. Hey, as a, as a fellow run at you guy, mm -hmm. I've been slapped upside the head many a time from a phase rush mid laner. It's just the nature of the game. With, but with the flash away, Jose Diodo doing a good job forcing that summoner spell here in top. Yeah, good cooldown burn. They also have the, the deeper vision on this side with Skeletal Crab and the, the ward on entry towards mid that Takui was able to place before rocking phase rush and evading the trundle gank from that point on um you can tell the perfect trundle pillars are the ones that actually get that knock up yeah so uh, in the previous one because of fade rush and the extra move speed santorin tried to place it a little bit in front and you could it only gets in front of them doesn't get the little mini bump uh in which case the oriana can just completely avoid it because you've also got the slow reduction but if you can get the perfect placement on the champion pixel perfect there to get also the slight knock back from having the pillar directly under them. Mm -hmm. Those are the great Trundle pillars. And uh, the ones that are go even above and beyond that are the ones that pin you against the wall. Oh, those, those are ones, ones are so yeah, tough. That, those are the ones that literally make your opponents rage in all chat that it's a bug or something. Because OMG, been able to, WTF, I'm stuck yeah. on pillar, question mark ping until the ping won't work anymore. There's a lot of tilt that comes from those. Yeah, they start flaming right. What is this? How can you? Pin me against the wall here with this stupid ability. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to slow you down, not get you stuck. Yeah. But in some places, it is supposed to get you stuck. Yeah. Those are the ones that are, are most dangerous. We'll see. Centaur definitely uh, an expert at the champion. We'll see if he can come out with some of those later and display them for us. But currently, Wave pushing against them. Hovers down here just for the backup. Exactly. Uh, they know they've got the control ward there in a river, so it's a little bit dangerous. So uh, just playing around that fog of war. Hansama, switch over to your Infernum immediately clear out that wave. Yep, it's just one of those plays where you're not trying to make a dive. There's no world where you're going to go for that play. You just need to make sure that wave can get pushed in far enough. As Bjergsen is level 6 here in mid, so is Takoi. Top side, those solo laners doing the same thing. Kumo at about half HP. Whippo with a lot more health to work with here, but of course, the level 6 is more meaningful for Graves because he gets a big addition to his burst with the ulti, whereas Jace just Mm -hmm. doesn't get a new skill. <laughs> so generally, if one person gets something and the other guy doesn't get something, hey, the guy that got something feels better. Uh, definitely true. I always like to get something. Uh, don't like to walk away empty handed. <laughs> Meanwhile, I got to also say, uh, touching on, on this matchup, the Jace, while Whippo is playing very Whoa. aggressively, doesn't even have a jungler here. These are the types of plays that you get from Whippo 
that Core JJ and his teammates are talking about when, you know, Bjergsen's in the interview like, I love the unexpected wild card aspect that Whipple brings to the team. You know, going yeah. for these aggressive plays. Sometimes when you bluff, you get rewarded. Sometimes you get punished, though. Exactly. If he's Kumo's punished gonna here. step up. Whippo knows he has health advantage here. Santorin's coming up, so they will get a 2v2 at least. Santorin level who? 5. Jose is level 6. Kumo only 200 HP. All right, he'll get back away. Now, Santorin. He's not really afraid of Jose, but... Couple, oh, yeah, a couple of factors uh, play into this. Number one is the obvious, level six for Jose. So you want to respect the jungler ultimate difference here. But also, I like the respect paid to res uh, support roam timers. Mm -hmm. As you you just had a recall on bottom side in that, that's one of the times where you get to see pro comms take place, where the restraint uh, is so apparent when you put it next to Whippo's previous play. You know, he goes in for this big chunk onto Kumo, very aggressive, didn't even have vision on enemy jungle. But this time around, the, the restraint is actually shown. They don't go for the overplay and don't give up anything extra. Support roam timers won't actually result in any deaths or even any deep vision this time around. And as we're talking about timers, of course, the blue buffs are now coming up for the second time this game, which means the mid laners are going to be past those. So plenty of extra wave clear and spell spam potential for these two. The gold difference between the two teams is non-existent. The last game we casted, remember, it was 100 Thieves up almost a thousand gold just from the state of laning. But here in this one, FlyQuest and Team Liquid are very evenly matched without plays being made by either side. And I think that Team Liquid are pretty happy because they've got a lot of scaling range options. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a look at this Rift Herald fight, though, because look at the AD carries. Both of them coming up. This is going to be a oh, full pit. Oh, Jose tried to go in. The Super Mega Death Rocket comes out. Jose Diodo only at 300 HP and it's first blood over to Ayla. FlyQuest trying to back out now, but Han Sama's ready to go. Red, white, time to fight. Flashes back out. The Rift Herald Eye is on the ground. Team Liquid cannot acquire that one. The Herald was slain by FlyQuest, but they can't get there to take the prize. Santorin's still hanging around long enough to try to keep it protected. Nobody from FlyQuest can get it. The Rift Herald is nullified. I know everybody wants to look at, you know, where the kills go, but I love highlighting front lines. And playing front line well early means getting that engage and still getting out. Watch how Ayla plays this on, on the Leona. So, First objective is trying to get the smite and the eyeball auto attack on Rift Herald. Jose flashes back to get over there. Rift Herald dropping, both AD carries heading up. They turn around, it is smited barely, and Ayla gets the kill, able to get out of danger as well in the aftermath. And because both AD carries head up, uh, it does, you know, because Hansama walks on the Chompers, cost him his flash to get back out, but uh, very well done there by Team Liquid. They don't get the last hit onto the Herald, but they do get the kill, which means they deny the pickup of it and can still reset down to bottom side and get Dragon. Exactly. The Herald was worth little more than a couple of minions worth of gold, and the Dragon going over to TL feels good to have that Infernal for a bit of extra damage here. It will be Ocean as our second Dragon of the game. Not a super early Drake take here, so it's not like we're going to be in one of those game states with a super early soul pressure. But again, you already pointed out right before the fight, TL's fine scaling up. They're not afraid of a long game when you have champions like Corky, like Aphelios. The range is key. Yeah, definitely key. It's just such, it's one of the most influential stats later on because it allows you so many things. Set up for objectives, possibilities of poke damage. You can, you can earn advantages just by hitting skill shots before the engagement even happens. But that's why we focus in on champ select. So much weight will be on the shoulders of Jose this game for FlyQuest. When you're facing a poke comp with Jason and Corky trying to scale up to their range advantages, then it's all about finding that flank angle, finding that engagement with Jarvan. Uh, he's the one with the gap closer. Him trying to deliver an Oriana shockwave is the win con there for FlyQuest because they've got great all in 5v5. But you do have to close that distance so that you don't get poked out before it happens. And here he goes. Jose goes in. Hansama has no flash to escape the cataclysm and the death that follows thereafter. One kill over to FlyQuest. Looking to make it too, but Ayla is too tanky. Santorin's here, not in time to save Follow his AD up. carry, but in time to make sure that Ayla doesn't just get dove. They will back away. First plate already gonna fall. FlyQuest wants to stick around and take a second as well. Nice kill picked up with a bit of extra gold in their pockets too. Santorin approaches the wave yet again, trying to protect the plate. Johnson needs a little bit more damage from those minions. There we go, they're gonna pick that one up. So far, 
you know, high rating here for Jose. He's getting gold stars uh, already because his eyes are attracted to the no summoner, no escape of Felios. Yep. This is exactly what we were talking about last game with the Ezreal getting drafted when they saw the Jarvan. When you're up against Jarvan, having something other than a flash to get away feels so much better. It, it really just feels like perfect timing there. You know, it's very pertinent as far as we're hyping him up for the team play for FlyQuest. Um, you can tell he's, his mind is already in the correct place. Good kill for them. You know, good advantages earned by taking some turret plates as well. And he wins on the smite versus Jace. Easy to walk up. Uh, no hope for Whippo trying to execute that scuttle crab. Yeah. No longer a jungler himself. Can't really fight the smite. It just doesn't work out too well unless you're, you know, hyper late game, 1,000 AP, one shot yeah. YouTube thumbnail to Zo so. Zoe from like uh, full range with a, a paddle star coming in. Okay, yeah, that one could do it. There, that uh, one could do it. Like but... old AP Gragas would steal Baron oh, all the time. Oh man, old AP combo. Gragas. I remember that one. That was... Uh, Those late game mages, time. they have a tendency to make junglers uh, look... Bad, but <laughs> it's not our fault, okay? The no. combos can scale crazy. We only wrong. have one button. They yeah. have multiple buttons, right? Yeah. It's a button difference. Anyway, we got an 800 gold lead here for the side of Team Liquid. Only one kill on both teams here so far. Nobody trying to be it, super aggro early. Yet. And it went to Ayla because the Ignite was sticking down. Yeah. He was the one who got the kill credit. So, yeah. Kills uh, kind of resident sleeper there on the side uh, for TL, but that's what they want. They want to they wanna wake up when their Corky's got at least two core. Looking for two core plus three uh, is where he really starts to shine. Those rockets really hurt. Uh, and Whippo is here also trying to get to that two core. Once he can get his uh, Muramana transformed, that's when the Jace really starts to deal the Ooh. pain. But honestly, he's dealing the damage already to Kumo. Kumo walked right back into that shock blast. It looked like it was going to miss, but uh -oh. good prediction there from Whippo. But now Ayla's ready nice to go. Fly. He leads the way with a solar flare, flashes <laughs> it. He missed R, he missed E, it doesn't matter. Flash auto there with a stun and ignite. Exactly. He didn't complete the yellow star because he, he landed a Q. So <laughs> <laughs> you can land the, the auto attack melee range Q. Good enough. All right, it made it happen. That's the second kill of the game here for TL. That one will go over to Bwipo, so they've got it on one of the carries this time. Johnson keeps trying to apply some pressure here to the top side, keeping these waves shoved in. Has nobody near him, but he's not worried right now. Again, they saw the play just get made on the opposite side of the map, so he knows he at least has time to clear out most of this wave before he has to back away. But we are seeing a teleport come in. Maybe Johnson doesn't have time after all. Bjergsen's over the wall. Package delivery there. Checks the brush after they use the blue trinket. They know that he has to be nearby and easy money for Bjergsen. Peekaboo, Bjergsen sees you. Another kill picked up for TL. No longer are these resident sleeper kills either, Flowers. These are kills going on to their poke champions, going on yes, to their long range scaling. Bjergsen gets one with the package. His Muramana is close to transforming here. And uh, you can see that that kill was also so well-timed because it gave him a free Herald. And double and, and squared. They get the eyeball. That didn't happen in the last one. That's a way better deal. <laughs> <laughs> Damn fine deal. I will take that deal. Takoi, separated from the rest of the team there by a solar flare, but it doesn't get caught out by anything. FlyQuest are able to stay alive through that. Rift Herald used here in mid lane. Almost gets the tier one turret, but close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Things still standing with about 10% HP, and Team Liquid keeps the pressure on here in the mid lane. Yeah, it's it's definitely mounting here for FlyQuest. FlyQuest going to have to start making some money moves quick here. That 3-0 is getting very tenuous. TL have 1,000 gold lead, two dragons, plus really strong late game options here with range and an Aphelios. Even if you do get close for that engage, Hansama will make you think twice about jumping in with the Cataclysm because if, if he's able to avoid the Shockwave follow-up, he will just kill Jose. So. There are so many things for FlyQuest to worry about later. Oh no, Jose de Oto, he threw the flag right in front of him so he didn't get the knock up there onto Bjergsen. He tries to find a little bit more damage, he cataclysms in. Bjergsen gets away there with a flash. Jose getting the summoner spell out. Ooh, that was a close rocket. Yeah, that would have been big for Johnson to be able to try and cash in on that. They do get away with just the flash off of Bjergsen exchange here uh, for the side of TL, though. So TL are very happy. Uh, they continue to count their blessings. More money mid lane, 
uh, funneled into Hansama, gets the turret. They open up the map a little bit. Bjergsen has to play a little bit more cautiously, to be fair, and does have now the five minute window between package pickups. So without the flash and without the package in sight, is going to be the vulnerable target. So he just has to keep in mind Jose's positioning. Jose is the lone champion that makes those aggressive plays on the side of FlyQuest. So as long as they track him and stay safe for at least the timer to get package, TL will be very happy with their scaling options. And FlyQuest continue trying to find whatever they can. This top lane pressure seems to be a recurring theme in this game. You saw Johnson pushing that up before he got picked off by the teleport from Bjergsen. Yeah. Kumo's back up here now trying to get it shoved up. But when we compare the farm of these top laners, it's Whippo up about five waves. Yeah, and he's up a whole level here on Kumo. Kumo now just 12 is uh, Whippo 13. So levels play a really big part in League of Legends, even bigger early on um, because the stats, just the base stats you get, but uh, late, later as well as we're transitioning, this is this is going to be a tiny bit of harassment. Um, <laughs> once Pippo is able to get his recall off, uh, he can finish uh, his Monomune, and then it's almost ready to transform as well. Uh, 321 closing in on that 360 mark and that's where we really start to see TL on this comp shine. Okay Team Liquid they might have to deal with a fly quest play here as Jose De Otto is moving in. Decoy's ready. Doesn't have a whole lot of mana to work with though. So Santorin flashing away stays safe on that one. Meanwhile up in the top side it's a 1v1. It's Whippo winning out on that one right now as Kumo puts the burst on him but not enough. Down to 150 HP Kumo tries to fall back, but Whippo, okay, he doesn't want to go point blank range against the Graves next to a wall. Exactly. If you flash that wall, yes, you, ha you have lethal damage, but you're right into the end of the line. And so you're face planting into the kill. Uh, this is one where he pulls back. Ooh. Okay. Jose trying to make the play there, ends up losing his own flash for it. Han Sama not afraid with Ayla right next to him. All right, I want to hone in on FlyQuest here because they're the ones with a lot of pressure mounting. Uh, with endgame options for Team Liquid looking so promising, they need to take advantage with aggressive plays on these flashless members. Bjergsen and Santorin now, no flashes on either of these members. FlyQuest gotta get aggressive here because TL are winning this game and FlyQuest's undefeated record is in jeopardy. Of course, for Bjergsen, it is difficult because of Valkyrie being such an easy escape mechanism against the Cataclysm. It's one of those things that they'll have to be aware. If they can get that cooldown and then make the Cataclysm play, that could be their angle. When you look at Santorin, when you look at Hansama, when you look at Ayla, all of these players do not have an escape for the Cataclysm built into the kit. So that's what I'm looking for from Jose. The next Drake alive in a minute. It would be the sole point Drake for the side of Team Liquid. But does FlyQuest have the opportunity to fight for it? Are they confident to take a team fight in open ground with a 2,000 gold deficit? Whether or not you are ready, you've got to go for it, I feel okay. like. Okay. It, it, the game is, is getting very tenuous for them. That Muramana transformation number one has come in for Bwipo, and Bjergsen just completed his as well. Those things do so much damage. I love this item. Try and, I try and incorporate it into any sort of scaling build that I can get on, on any junglers. Um, but it's much better served on solo laners because they can actually transform it early, as we can see here. Now we want to see them actually use, though, because it will be TL. You need to get there early to try and get your poke damage out, get in position, and then you see them play a little, little hesitant. You want to actually make the most out of your range, throw out your rockets, your shock blasts, see if you can get some chunks down early onto FlyQuest, which puts a lot of pressure on them. They know Jose's got to find an angle. He has to get in there for the Cataclysm Shockwave combination. Uh, to, to crack this poke composition and close the range onto Corky, onto Jace. And it's so tough because, I mean, back to what we were talking about at the very beginning, you don't get a second try. If you go in and it, it's screwed up, they have the flashes, they get away or whatever, Jose is pretty much dead to rights. There's not really a whole lot you can do to stop that from happening. Bjergsen now finding Kumo here in the bottom lane. Package delivery trying to cut him off. Santorin's ready to go too. Drops the subjugation, and there it is. Bjergsen picking up kill number four of the game for TL. I'm going from cautiously optimistic, trying to hype him up, to disappointed, Flowers. Yeah? Yeah, because that was just lazy. You know this is Dragon 3. They're going to go for soul point. They literally just had a giant dragon screaming on the rift. <laughs> 
because it was killed. Okay, so you've got no business there. You can hear the giant alert from package. Like, turn on, turn on the audio. You know they're going for this objective. You know the package is picked up, and FlyQuest get punished. So, TL. <laughs> well, I'm disappointed okay. in FlyQuest. DL are so happy to see that. They're like, you know what? We are cruising. Four minutes left on the soul to arrive. Push there uh, on top side on the, on the uh, last outer turret for themselves. All they have to do now, look towards oh, mid. No. Afro Moo is going to get caught here in the middle. Jose Diodo coming back around. Ayla might just die first, but he stays alive there through the shielding. Last rocket finds him. Now, can Johnson get excited enough to get any more? No, he's not excited. He's dead. Whippo picking up the kill on that one. One for one here in mid lane with the enemy 80 carry down. Team Liquid feels they've won this fight pretty easily. They'll keep moving forward. Whippo going for some snipes, looking for the damage here. Can't quite find enough just yet. Whippo goes in, Whippo gets one, Whippo goes down, two for two team fight. Another Whippo moment. I love these. I want to collect as many as, as they make. Flowers. You want to collect some Whippo moment trading yes. cards? Yes, That's I do. That's what we need. Give me all the Whippo moment collectibles because this is what Team Liquid needed. Throughout the history of this organization, they have had a tendency to get slow, to get lethargic in some of the games when you watch them play. Yes, they get wins, but they need that wild card, that excitement factor. And when you see him get the kill on Johnson, he gains red buff. When he gains red buff, he gains the regeneration, but he also gains the slow on his auto attack. And that's why he goes for the kill. Anyways, you know the the outset of this engagement. They traded on the front line of there. Ayla gets knocked down, but Whipple comes in. That's a shock blast with Muramana. Did you see how much damage that does? That was almost 500 oh, damage punch. with the empowered shock blast. And then he's like, I have red buff. Look at this. Look at this. I'm flashing on these guys. Even with uh, the shock blast not landing on great oh. there, he went for the kill. We're right back into this, though. It's another play being made and another death for Ayla. FlyQuest picking him off there. But what else can they get? A single kill onto a support is not enough at this point in the game. I want to see FlyQuest be able to find more, but it doesn't look like they're in any condition to do so. Yeah, you know, that, that one is getting a little sus there. Teal engaged with Bjergsen bottom. He's got unleashed teleport, but that thing still takes a while to channel. So if you go for the... Uh, immediate engagement there. FlyQuest find themselves with an opening in front of them, and they've got to push it to the limits. What can they get out of this opportunity? Ayla's down, so you get an objective. You get the mid turret. That is very, very valuable. And trying to funnel some money here onto the carries, and they oh, go for it. Jose is it. Done. Jose Yoto. They pull back Bwipo. It'll be a one-for-one one trade. Bjergsen coming in. There's that unleashed teleport. Takoy might just get locked down now. The rockets are flying in. Aframu doing his best to protect with the unbreakable. Bjergsen has to get right back out as Kumo's not able to get enough damage to finish off either target. Hans Sama flashes over the wall. Kumo still in hot pursuit. Hans gets away for now. Ooh. Zap does not find Bjergsen. He'll escape as well. You hate to see it when it's a cloud dragon rift. These rings of speed, even if you flash after him, it's a little bit late because Bjergsen already made it onto the speed and yep. there's a big differential because you're not on that cloud speed yet. So he's just going to get further and further away. Flashing for the zap there uh, isn't able to find anything. And that's an important flash, Flowers. Jinx it's flash it's. late game. That thing is gold. Let's take another look at how the fight happened here as TL stepped forward and Jose went in. This is so necessary. We keep talking about how much pressure is on FlyQuest to make these plays. The flash fall up there uh, from the ultimate as well from Aphromoo trying to find it, but it, regardless of that, it is still the one for one. for one. And so Bjergsen going forward here from Team Liquid is the only thing that gives FlyQuest another opening. They're so happy to take this. He jumps in against the wall. Then is what I'm talking about with that cloud speed. Uh, on your screen right now, this extra speed is what allowed Bjergsen to walk his way out, didn't die to the flash zap, and FlyQuest are left without a huge amount of comeback off of that play, but those are the openings that they need to punish to the fullest. Well, here they go, Bjergsen, the he's flash. caught out, he's shut down! That is what FlyQuest needed, and Jose barely survives, nicely done. Time and time again, we talk about Jose so much on his shoulders. He has to be the one to win this game for FlyQuest. He finds another engagement onto the flashless carry. They take down Bjergsen. No rockets to worry about for this sole fight. But the important part is their jungler is the one that had 50 HP left. Jose had to go back and reset. So now he still has to make his way back over to the fight. They can't start the Drake up with the enemy jungler nearby and there's not there. 
FlyQuest with Jose coming back out. They've got control over the river. They'll deny the soul. Exactly. They know that they've won the objective off of that play from Jose. Because of the teleport being used last time around as well, no summoner spells for Bjergsen. Even if he got back up, he wouldn't be able to get down there. So no use in TL trying to delay even this objective. Jose comes up clutch when FlyQuest need him most. And we are going to have to see more and more and more of it too. And the follow-up has to be done by Takui. And he's doing his part of the two-part combination of Jarvan Oriana. This man is getting fed. He's invested in full spell penetration here. Shadow Flame Flat Penetration plus Sork Shoes on top of the Void Staff here uh, means even with little magic resist purchase, Bjergsen now has one no magic mantle. Mm -hmm. He's full penetration. So these Shockwaves, level 16, uh, with as much magic penetration in as you can get, that that power behind the engagement from Jose is going to be there. He's got three of the kills to his name, and he's trying to fund it as best he can. That's the hopes for FlyQuest. It's still going to be difficult because yeah. every five minutes you have to repeat these it's tough, man. Pressure scenarios where the soul comes up and Baron's going to be on the table. So TL have the upper hand. They've got all these options with objectives and they've got this poke coming at you. And so you don't get many chances at getting that engaged. But if you make the most of the chances that you get, and you can, uh, you can be rewarded, as we just saw. Well, I'm looking at the flash timers on the side of Team Liquid. Han Sama, Bjergsen, and Santorin are all about three quarters of the way back to having that flash ready. That's about, what, one minute, sure. 15 seconds or so? So that's going to be another big problem here for FlyQuest. Yes, Jose likes to have his own flash. It gives you a little bit more playmaking, but it's more important that the enemy flashes are down. So then the job becomes much more complicated. You've got to be able to either just kill them immediately, like you're talking about with Takoi's build full spell pin, just make sure they die, or you're going to have to bait the flashes, back up, regroup, and then do it again for real once the ulti's ready again. Yeah. All right. Let's see if they can do it. FlyQuest, step number one, trying to fight the Vision Wars, setting up over the Baron because three minutes on Dragon means you have to reallocate all of your Vision resources, all of your control wards uh, being implemented here on Baron. Those are... Those are really your only advantage. <laughs> when you're the team <laughs> that's outranged, you're like, all right, our biggest advantage, fog of wars. If they can't see our Jarvan coming, that's the best chances we can do Just to set jump up. out and surprise. Yeah, exactly. That we can set Jose up. And so Jose is going to be a, a brush camper. He's, he's walking around. He's trying to get these get these angles down. Meanwhile, TL push out on bottom side. They make the most of, uh, you know, Whippo is unleashed teleport ready, pushes out bottom side, gets his recall off, purchase. He gets his guardian angel flower. Okay. This is so bad for FlyQuest. Now you have to get onto Bjergsen. You have to get onto either Bjergsen or Hansama. And you know, if you're going onto Hansama, he's going to have damage. So you better land the CC or he will kill you anyway. Um, meanwhile, Blippo is going to feel confident here with GA for the fight. One of the biggest game-changing, fight-changing items that you can have for a single fight. Uh, being able to get right back up as a poke champion also serves so many options here for the team fights. Because as long as you spread out your poke champions and your damage dealers, then you can just refocus. And it's so good against an all-in comp as well. Guardian Angel passive is one of those things that can either make or break a fight or be utterly worthless, right? If you're up against a poke comp and you just randomly get shot to pieces and die, well, it doesn't matter because they're probably just going to clean you up anyway. But in this all-in situation where they must commit, they must put themselves in danger to even have a chance of killing you, it just feels like the opportunity to make those plays based around the Guardian Angel is almost guaranteed. You can tell Whippo, as soon as he lands a slow from... His uh, grudge there is threatening, chasing Kumo down. He's two levels up on Kumo now, constant pushing power from him. So not only is the four item Jace level 18 gonna bring a lot to the side lanes, but as we've been hyping up, if you properly set up your range champions uh, in a kind of semi-circle, uh, then you'll see them be able to focus fire the same target, but also spread. So if the, oh, and 2v1. <laughs> Kumo tries to get away. Whippo and Bjergsen putting a lot of damage into him. Not quite enough to get the kill. Whippo's immortal shield bow keeping him... Uh, or Kumo's immortal shield bow, excuse me, keeping him safe from Whippo as he tries to bring in the backup there. Tried to make it happen, just not quite enough burst power between those two. Still a 7-6 to six game for the side of TL. 2,000 gold up, 20 seconds on the Drake. It's still sole point for Team Liquid. Flowers, how sad of a scenario is it if you invest in a split-pushing item, Hole Breaker, and 
and you can't split push. <laughs> Feels bad. Man. That is uh that's a little bit of a frowny face over there. Big don't, frowny yeah. face. Don't get to to play how, what you purchased. And it looks like FlyQuest are just going to give away the soul this time. They're saying, okay, we can't stop it. We don't have the positioning. Cloud Soul is not worth inting a team fight and giving away a Baron. Happy Lux coming out from FlyQuest just saying, all right, it's cool. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, this does enable some new things here for the side of Team Liquid. Trundle can drop the ulti, run at you like crazy. Leona doing the same thing. There's a lot of potential here with this soul. Now let's see how TL is going to play the rest of it. They've got the siege set up here in mid. It is a five-man effort. They're backing away. Bjergsen still has package, but I believe it will be expiring soon. Yeah. And we've, we actually had a, a couple of games where we've ended up in this scenario um, where the one team has a big range advantage. Oh, oh my God. But Corky this, Rockets. But these, these are not unexpected. We've been talking about this for 15 minutes, setting up this possibility. Uh, and, you know, props to Team Liquid for getting themselves there. Now is the moment of truth. Okay. Baron is started up. They'll burn it down. They've got early positioning on the objective, and FlyQuest time is running out. Jose Diodo already used the flag in the pixel brush. There's no way for them to engage, and the Baron goes over to Team Liquid. They're going to drop down Eliona ulti. Solar Flare doesn't find much, but Ayla's still going in. The rest of the team is not close behind him. He uses that stasis to try to stay alive. Okay. He'll get away for now. Whippo's going to find Takoy off the side. Aphromoo already dead. Bjergsen taking the kill on that as Whippo stays safe, getting himself away. Han Sama looking for the snipes. They're going to find Takoy. There goes your guardian angel on Whippo. Santorin leads the charge and takes a big old bite at a powder. There's your three kills for one. Team Liquid gets Baron in a team fight. Yeah, they're going to be walking all over Summoner's Rift like they've been walking all over FlyQuest Flowers. This one's going to be a game ender. 5,000 gold, Dragon Soul, Baron on the split pusher as well. Blippo's back out to bottom side. They're not going to leave any area open for FlyQuest right through the front door. Here we go. FlyQuest, they're at least getting some of these players respawning, but the siege machine continues from TL. Now going to be forced to back away as they can clear out the waves. Hansama just puts a couple more shots into Kumo on his way out. As we said, though, Whippo recalled, went back into split pushing duty, so he shoves the wave in. TL can reset. They get all their extra money, even taking away Krugs. And here's another look at it. They just burn this Baron down so quickly. FlyQuest then, this is where it gets exciting. This is where you want to see, uh, you know, some of the, the effect of these team fights. Engagement immediately from Ayla into the Zonias, creating so much space. Uh, and they chunk down Afro in that timer. But the cool part is on the sectioned off fight, when they focus down Whippo, um, you know, he's got the luxury of that GA. Never oh. mind. We are back out to action. Ayla going to get popped. He's caught out here in the mid lane. And the other thing that I wanted to point out in that replay that we just saw, the reason that Ayla went in and nobody else could follow, they were respecting the Takoy ultimate. They did not want to walk into a three-man Orianna ulti. And now that Ayla's down again, this is a really nice sign for FlyQuest because Ayla's dead for 28 seconds. Baron's only around for another 50 seconds. You're removing the pressure of their five-man Baron plays for a lot of that remaining time. Yeah. You get to delay it now. This, The rest of this Baron timer should tick out uh, before Ayla gets there. But Teal's plan remains the same. Mm -hmm. They're going to group up, push out uh, one lane with Whippo first, have Woo! him join the team. Never mind. He'll just shock blast your carry. That shock blast took three quarters of Johnson's health. And the follow up there has Takoy and Afro move both nearly dead as well. FlyQuest heads for the hills and Team Liquid heads for the mid lane turret. They want to make you know these extra 17 seconds count with this Baron. They're going to get right up to that inhibitor turret. That thing will melt. There it goes. The inhibitor itself will quickly join. OK, Team Liquid, they've all, oh my goodness gracious. How do you even play against this? Best stat in the game, Flowers. Range. Range. Damage has flooded in. This is the cautionary tale that we start telling 10 minutes in, the, the power of the poke and Team Liquid are getting the most out of it. Here we go. Can they finish it, though? They've got Johnson down. There's no jinx on the side of FlyQuest, so it would be a miracle team fight if FlyQuest can pull this out. 
Pedal to the metal. Team Liquid keeping it moving forward down the top lane next. Minion Wave's about to crash in, and I expect Team Liquid to go full forward on top of that one. There's your next kill with both carries down. This is surely the end of the game and the end of FlyQuest winning streak. Team Liquid have their number. They got it all figured out. Jose the Odo tries to buy some time. They're at least going to get the kill onto Hansama. Kumo dies. He tries to flash right back into the spawn platform. Johnson respawns, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Not in time. Not today. They are at least grabbing a kill there on Debuipo. Bjergsen getting himself back as they continue to put the damage here into the Nexus. Bjergsen and Santorin will do it. Team Liquid ends the FlyQuest winning spree. Nicely set up there, even from draft for Team Liquid. FlyQuest, they make a gambit. They go for third pick in the first round of Orianna instead of securing an engaged champion for Aphromoo, who has been the premier playmaker for that team and getting those engagements. And engage is the, the most critical thing that you need against the poke composition. There were some good plays in the middle of the game from Jose. They got a couple of good picks and you could see the light that could be there if you can make those plays consecutively and reliably. And yet, Team Liquid, they're able to farm out this game. They scale up. Whippo played so well in the side lane. Yep. Split pushing advantage for him. Also, 